So what do you think are the three traits that most successful people have? The three traits that really I see as a common theme between a lot of different successful business people, whether they be six figure, seven figure, eight figure, or like really high performing athletes or people that are at the pinnacle at what they do. Doesn't really necessarily need to be a business owner, but they're just top of their game. I think these three things are, the three traits are commitment, humbleness, and awareness. And commitment. It's the commitment to their craft, their trade. So many people, doesn't, they don't even give the chance for their project or the thing that they're trying to commit to, a chance to succeed before they already gave, given up. They think that, you know what, they did something for a week and they give up because it's like, oh, this is too difficult um, and this doesn't work. So many people buy all these like, working out programs like P90X and stuff like that. They're like, oh, this doesn't work. Now I'm gonna buy Insanity because it's a better program. But at the end of the day, it's not really about the program. It's about the commitment of whether you have what it takes to, to see something through. Honestly, you don't even need any of these programs in order for you to have a beautiful physique and healthy physique, right? You don't need that. You can just freaking do 500 setups every single day and guaranteed you're gonna have abs, correct? Right, so I think really commitment to really see things through and commitment to your own craft. Um, there's always been a saying that, you know, you need to work 10,000 hours in a specific trade or a specific thing for, for you to become a master at it, right? And not a lot of people have the commitment in their trade, uh, whether it be business development. You know, for me, I've been dealing with business for the last 10 years. Yeah, I've failed in multiple of businesses. I'm talking about over 50 different businesses before I had my three that's successful, like you guys see. Um, and at the end of the day, if I've given up in the first five, I don't even call them my businesses, I call them my projects that I work on. Um, and if I've given up in the first five or first 10, then you would never see what you see today. And I wouldn't be here speaking to you today, right? So I think really commitment to your craft and your trade is the number one thing that would be um, the number one trait. Now, how do you have commitment, right? How do you develop commitment? It is having the discipline to do so, right? Developing discipline is key for you to have commitment. And a lot of times, a lot of people don't have the commitment because they lack the discipline to work through their feelings. And what I mean by that is, today I don't feel like working out because it's raining outside or it's cold or it's hot, or uh, oh, I ate something, or I'm gonna go party, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's why I'm not gonna go work out, right? But it is going through, doing these things over and over again, regardless of whether you feel like it or not, regardless of whether there are results or not. It's just that simple, right? Um, so that's number one, commitment. How do you stay committed is by having discipline, it's the same thing, right? Discipline is do you, sometimes, so when you're a, a little kid, you don't feel like going to school. You still need to wake up at eight and you still need to go to school. That's discipline. It's so crazy nowadays. Like, well, it's funny that you mentioned that because nowadays, as we grow older, we lack the discipline to do anything that we want to achieve in life. And what I mean by that is when we're kids, we're forced to wake up at eight every single day, get changed, go to school, and that's, our, that's what we need to do. And as we grow older, we never, we don't have these things to, to set us and to give us good discipline, to really commit to something. And that's the reason why so many people out there are failing with their businesses, because they fail to co commit. They fail to have the discipline to work through the, the hurdles, whether it be, hey, you know what? You ran a Facebook ad, it didn't work out. Okay, you know what? Facebook ad doesn't work. Let's jump to influencer marketing. And you pay for two influencers, they did a post for you and you don't have the sales that you're looking for. Oh, you know what, influencer marketing doesn't work. You don't really stay through and go through the hurdle of figure out why it doesn't work and have the discipline to be like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna work with 100 influencers by the end of the year. Set that goal out and have the discipline to see it through and be committed. That's the number one trait that I see a lot of successful people um, 
have to achieve the level of success that they have in their own industry. Mm -hmm. The second most important trait that I see, people who are successful, whether it be the businesses or an athlete or you know anyone that's top of the trade, is humbleness. Um, two years ago, I won the top 30 under 30. Out of all the awards that I've won previously, this is by far the most prestigious one. And I think it has also been the most detrimental award that I've ever won. And what I mean by that is because after winning that award, um, I became, I didn't become someone, but I thought I knew a lot more than other people. I thought that I was in a position that people can't touch me. I thought that I was, Dan Wilson, now you've made it, you're here now. And that mindset quickly became very dangerous for me because I, ha I was having these internal dialogues of saying that, you know what, you know your stuff, it's okay, you can go out there and you can dominate the world. And I stopped reading, I stopped having the attitude of, of wanting to learn because I feel like, hey, you know what, I'm in a position to teach now. And after a month of that feeling, it became very uneasy to me. It became very unnatural. I felt like, do I really know everything? And when I was talking to other people who are more successful than me, I realized that, oh damn, I'm just being arrogant. It is because of the fact that I thought I won an award and that defined who I was as giving me value, as telling me that, hey, you know what, you're better than everyone else because you're top 30 under 30. But after meeting people who are much further than me in their careers, in their trajectory, that made me realize that, oh no, Wilson, that is not true. You, there are a lot of people who are much more successful than you are, whether it be mindset, whether it be financially, whether it be in their careers. And within a month, I quickly turned that around in, in terms of the mindset. I, I had this internal dialogue and I told myself and slapped myself for it. I'm like, you know what, Wilson, you've gone this far, you've developed so far, and an award does not define who you are, right? Um, that's when I realized the importance of being humble, right? The importance of the attitude to always want to learn more and being a student of life. Right. It doesn't matter what you achieve in life, there's always something to learn. And once I had that click in me, automatically I felt so insignificant. And what I mean by that is when I go to these trade shows or conferences and, and stuff like that, I, I meet these really high level entrepreneurs and just hearing what they do, whether it be an eight figure, $10 million business, 20, doing $20 million in sales and e-commerce, I'm like, wow, that is amazing. And they're only 25. That really hit a chord in me. Like, I'm like, wow, I'm so, so, so insignificant. And it really set me in a place where I promised myself that moving forward, doesn't matter what I have achieved, I'm always constantly a student of life. And I think it is constantly reminding you of yourself of this and truly believing it, that you're always learning and that there are always stuff out there for you to learn. That's what's gonna set you apart from everyone else. It is the people who think they know everything that they stop within their journey to achieving greatness and mastery. But it is the people who have the humbleness to continue to learn whether how far along the journey that they are, that's what widens the gap between the people who are super successful and the people, the, the regular day Joes. It is the humbleness to learn and to understand and truly feel that, right? Um, that's the second trait. I have two occasions where 
it hit me the most. And what I mean by it hit me the most is when I felt like I was all that. The first experience I just shared with you, which is um, when I, I won, won the award, and the second experience was when I first graduated from university. That was when I was first working at Shaw. I was working at Shaw Cables. I was, I was young, I was ambitious, and I had a lot to give, I feel like, to my company. And I felt like that I can change the whole company and the whole department because I was working at Shaw Cables. And I'm like, hey, you know what? They can implement this, they can implement this, and I can, I'm smart. Um, and why are they so dumb? Why are these things so repetitive? Well, why is there so many redundancies? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? And I felt like that. It just sucked. <laughs> it sucked because no one listened. And I sucked because it seems like that my, my gift of being talented and wanting to give, wanting to excel, was not being reciprocated by the company. They didn't see what I had to give. And looking back in retrospective, like I'm just like, wow, how naive of me to think like that when I just became, when I just graduated as a fresh graduate, and I had not much management experience. Now, because of the fact that I'm managing over 100 people. I understand why the redundancies are in place. I understand why these uh, standard operating procedures are in place because of a certain reason. And just because I had that heart and ambition to want to fight and want to give more doesn't mean that I know more. And I think that a lot of people that are graduating and are just coming into the workforce suffer from the syndrome as well is that they think they know all that um, I myself is definitely guilty of that um, and these are the two biggest moments for me that I realized that I wasn't thinking right right and humbleness really allowed me to excel in my career for sure and I think it that's the common theme of the, everyone that I meet who are super successful it's crazy to see how people who are super successful, they're so humbled. And what I mean by that is there's this time when I met this guy super successful. You wouldn't even know how successful he is. And I'm talking about like $50 million entrepreneur, 25 years old, okay? And he was sitting here, he was asking me all these questions and being super engaged with me. And at that time, I was just, if you didn't know him, you'd be like, oh, did this guy just start off in business or What's going on? Like, why is he so engaged? Why is he so wanting to learn? It is crazy. And yet, these people that I, I speak to, these, the people who are successful is always constantly wanting to learn. They truly believe that they don't have everything it takes to be successful. So they always ask about, what's your strategy? What are you doing with this that's different? How are you doing this differently? So then that way they can take that to absorb that and put it into their own business. And a lot, of, a lot of times, people who are always learning is so far ahead because of the fact that they're always learning. And they always have this humbleness in them that they don't know enough. And the people who think they know everything stops learning. They stop progressing in life because they think they know all that. They stop right here. So last trait that I see as being one of the most important traits for business owners or people who are wanting to excel in life is awareness. I myself am super impatient. I'm aware of that and I choose to be impatient because I want to have the urgency to excel. I have, I want to push the envelope my business and I want to push them both because I always want to take that step further and that's the reason why I'm impatient I choose to be that way which is very different from that person that's sitting here who is impatient and is unaware of why he's in the pain in the patient and the consequences that it takes to be impatient 
If he does not make that cautious decision to be impatient, then he can never really reap the rewards of why he's doing it, right? And people would just see him as, oh, you know what? That guy's just being impatient. He has no patience. He sucks. But for me, I truly understand why I'm doing it. It is to progress. It is to have that urgency. That's why it's always go, 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 go. That's why it's hustle time all the time. Because we need, we're moving in a day and age. If you want to be ahead of your competitors, you've got to hustle. You've got to, impa to be impatient and have that urgency. Which applies to an, any other trades out there. So for example, if you're in a room full, talking to three, four hundred people, I wouldn't be humble. I would be full of confidence. I would say that I'm all that because I need to command the room and to demand the attention of the room so people can listen to me. That way I can make an impact in their lives. And I choose to be that way to be super confident in my trade, which is very different from being humble. And at that moment, I choose to be super confident where some people might even think as arrogance. But then yet, it is to serve a certain purpose. That's the difference. The people who are super confident all the time would come across arrogant if they are not aware of the ability to be humble. They would always be that arrogant bastard who's like, oh fuck man, he, know, he thinks he's, he knows all that. And stop progressing in life because they're blindsided of the benefit of being humble and to always learn. Vice versa, the person who is humble might be super, super knowledgeable in their trade yet they cannot impact other people because they're so humble. They don't have the confidence to be a great leader. They don't have the confidence to command people, to, to, to lead people, to tell people with confidence what to do. And it is a shame because they only know humbleness and they don't know how to be confident. And the whole point is having the awareness of both sides and cautiously choosing which trait to work to your benefit and which trait you want to excel in. That's the importance of being aware, whether it be confidence, whether it be humbleness, whether it be uh, patience, whether it be commitment, whether it be determination. There are these people that we watch in, on Dragon's Den and you'd be like, why is that person so stupid? Like we all know the business idea sucks. That's not going to gain any market market awareness or market validation at all and everyone is judging them like I would tell my wife I'm like oh my god that idea sucks poor guy who is so committed that everyone tells him that it sucks yet he's like nope you guys don't believe in me but this idea works I'm gonna commit to it he's super super dedicated and committed but he's not aware of the surrounding he's not aware to be uh, to, to to take on the, the, the other side of the situation, the other side of the spectrum and to have that perspective of, hey, after the fact that you tested it on the market and there's no validation, then you should pivot. It is not blindly being committed to one thing that makes you successful. It is having the awareness and understanding when to pivot. And that trait of awareness is so important when it comes to being an entrepreneur or people who are wanting to be a master of their craft. Now you may be asking like, hey, how do I become aware? And the answer is to meditate. As cliche as it sounds, so many high performers, Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, all these crazy guys are always meditating. They set blocks of time to think because of the fact that they understand how important it is to be aware. So many times, like, we're always bombarded with all these noise. We wake up, we go to work, we go to happy hour, we head home, we, we lay on the couch, we watch TV, we turn on our phone, and we scroll Instagram, boom, 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 and we have dinner, and then we head to bed. And constantly, we are bombarding ourselves with noise, 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 distraction, distraction, distractions. And yet, we're not being aware of the fact that are we doing things 
intensely to move forward in life, we're numbed by everything that goes on around us, by what the world feeds us and what we feed ourselves. And we lose the ability to make choices. We lose the ability to be aware of what am I doing and self-auditing and what I'm doing today, moving me closer to my goal every single day. And when you're not aware of these things and if you don't have that awareness, then you don't have the ability to choose. And that's the reason why meditation would allow you to have the internal dialogues, to understand and see past the noise in the world every single day, to understand things are always changing. That these internal dialogues would allow you to be a lot more aware with your everyday life. If you want to be super successful and at the pinnacle and be the master of your trade, awareness is definitely the number one trait. So commitment, having the discipline to commit to something and see things through and being humble, always learning, being a thirst, having, having that, being a student of life and having the awareness to make decisions every single day that moves you closer to your goal is what I see as a common pattern of people who are super successful in their trades. Thank you.